Just bear with us one second. Let's make sure everything's cool. <clears throat> All right, come on. All right, Shalom. We're going to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of these so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to but our Israelites, and we also want to give divine honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing up this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, so uh, as you see, this is going to be a response to the elder apostle, uh, elder apostle Gabar's video that he did entitled uh, The Big Question. And um, a few points that he had made in that, that lesson is, was uh, going into how these devils being Esau, even the so-called white man, how he's going to uh, blame us for various uh, false flag terrorist attacks that he... Um, that he uh, does here in America and various, you know, various places and everything like that. But um, just bringing out the fact that that's not far fetched. All right, Esau blaming us for these mass attacks and these people sincerely believing that we have a, a part um, in the terrorist attacks that go down. That's not far fetched. All right. So um, what I'll do is I want to go ahead and just look up this word real quick. This phrase, false flag. And then we're going to bring out an example in history. And this is all through the spirit, you know, another brother had went into uh, to, uh, went into how Nero had burned down Rome and blamed it on the uh, Jews. And, you know, we're going to go into the same thing as well. All right. So this uh, term false flag, just looking it up in Wikipedia online, it says a false flag is a covert operation designed to deceive. Uh, the deception creates the appearance of a particular party, group or nation being responsible for some activity disguising the actual source our responsibility. And that's precisely what Esau Edom is going to do, man. You know? So, uh, did you have anything you want to bring out first off? Yeah, I was just going to hit this real fast. Second Corinthians 2 and 11, it says, but Satan should get an advantage of us. We are not ignorant of his devices, man. So, hey, 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 we, we know uh, what Esau is planning on right, through the Holy Spirit, you know, sure. because we know his MO. We know his characteristics according to the prophecies, according to the Bible. All right, so jumping into this article. Uh, so this is from uh, www.eyewitnesshistory.com. Um, uh, the title of it says, Nero persecutes the Christians, 64 AD. And something to kind of keep in mind is this time period that it is. All right, so uh, in 70 AD, that's when you had the massive uh, siege of Jerusalem. That was something that uh, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai uh, prophesied, uh, Matthew's 24th chapter, Luke the 21st chapter, and so on and so forth. And um, even two years after 64 AD, before this event specifically happened, you had the first uh, Roman Jewish war. Then you had, um, so that was in 66 AD and then uh, 67 AD, I believe, or 68 AD is when you had um, the beginning of the, of the siege of Jerusalem. Because that siege of Jerusalem, when Titus, uh, Titus Vespasian, you know, um, came, uh, came in Jerusalem and, and tore down the temple and everything like that. That wasn't just a, a short time period, man. It began in like 67 AD and spanned for about three years, three or four years, man. All right, so this is just showing you how different events led up until them bringing a mass persecution upon our people. So as a matter of fact, let me grab this as well. This is the book of uh, Matthew chapter 24 in verse... <clears throat> Let me jump around in here. This is Matthew chapter 24 and verse, uh, let's see. Jump. This is Matthew chapter 24 and verse, I'm going to just start at verse five. Verse three says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, anointed, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, 
and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So the Lord has given us a, a, a outline of the signs of his coming. All right. So some of these things, you know, uh, when you read in this chapter applies to 70 AD and some of these things are going to uh, happen again in the time that we're in, man. It says all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And that's what we're about to read about, man. How certain men of the Lord, they were afflicted. All right. We're blamed for uh, certain things that were going on in Rome. And then what they were delivered up to be afflicted, man. All right. So this is a hey, this, this is no new thing under the sun, man. We're about to go through some great persecution and we have to make sure that what we're building up our faith and really putting ourselves in um, in these scriptures, man. All right. Knowing that we're going to actually have to live these things and apply these scriptures, man. So jumping into this article, it says a generation after the death of Christ, Christianity had reached Rome in the form of an obscure offshoot of Judaism, popular among the city's poor and destitute. Members of this religious sect spoke of the coming of a new kingdom and a new king. And that's the same thing that we're doing now. So just like what? We're out on the highways and byways proclaiming the downfall of this kingdom, Esau, Edom's rulership. That was the same thing that was happening back then. As a matter of fact, uh, roughly around 15 years before uh, this uh, period, 64 AD, you had Claudius expel the Jews for uh, aggressive missionary efforts. All right. And you can read about that in the book of Acts, man. So what? He was kicking us out of these various cities because of what we're doing now, man. We're proclaiming the downfall of Esau, Edom's rulership, the downfall of America. All right. The uprising of a new king, you know, of a new kingdom, a new heaven, man. So these same things are going to apply unto us, man. We're looked at as a threat in the eyes of the so-called white man, not because we out there with guns or anything, man, but because we're bringing out the truth, man. Got something else? Yeah, know what you quote. This is Acts 18 and 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. That's right. So, hey, you could look that up in history, man. All right. It says that what he commanded all Jews to depart from Rome because of aggressive missionary efforts. Now, when you look into it, all right, just like what they said that we're aggressive, uh, that we have a uh, rough speech, you know, and everything like that, man. That's the same thing that was going on back then. So this lets you know that uh, during the time of this 64 AD that we're reading about uh, with Nero blaming the, uh, the, the, the burning of Rome uh, to the men of the Lord, man. Uh, the, the 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 ministry was flourishing. All right, people were growing in the faith in Yahweh Shai, man. And as this was continually flourishing, you know, disciples were uh, being brought by the thousands, man. What then? Esau started coming up with uh, various ways to to uh, to try and hinder that process, man, and to try and uh, uh, look at try and be justified in the sight of the citizens of killing us, man, and persecuting us. All right. So it says. Um, these views provoked suspicion among the Jewish authorities who rejected the group and fear among the Roman authorities who perceived these sentiments as a threat to the empire. So us proclaiming of a new kingdom and a new king ruling upon the planet Earth is what a threat to the empire. So just like now, man, and this is the same thing that uh, happened in the book of Esther. You had Haman, who was a, a, a descendant of Esau, Edom, specifically the tribe of Amalek, man. All right, you had Haman. Um, he uh, uh, he was uh, saying he was telling he was telling the king at that time I believe it was like a uh, Artaxerxes he told Artaxerxes that look we can't establish our rulership you know we can't establish our uh, order throughout uh, throughout the world with these Jews these malicious people that are spread amongst um, our people man so that's the same thing that's happening now as a matter of fact I'll try and find that real quick you have something not. I'm going to grab that in Esther. I believe it's the 13th. Uh, where Haman, um, Artaxerxes, uh, had him write that letter about getting rid of the Jews amongst them. Let's see if I can find that. In my pocket. Just bear with us. Yeah, this is uh, Esther chapter 13, found in the Apocrypha. And uh, I'm going I'm to try and get to the point. All right. Uh, Esther chapter uh, 13 and verse 4. I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, now, when I asked my counselors, being Artaxerxes, how this might be brought to pass, 
Haman, that excelled in wisdom among us and was approved for his constant good with with Salakia, for his constant good will and steadfast fidelity, and had the honor of the second place in the kingdom, declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there there was scattered a certain malicious people, speaking of us, the Jews, man, the Israelites, that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandment of kings. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So he's like, look, we can't, our kingdoms cannot unite. We can't continue our so-called new world order in this time period with these people out on the street corners. With this malicious people is how they perceive, uh, perceive us proclaiming this word, man. Verse five, seeing then we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men, deferring in the strange manner of their laws and evil affected to our state working all the mischief they can, that our kingdom may not be firmly established. And that's exactly what they're saying about us now, man. And this is the same thing they were saying about the apostles in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, it talked about how the apostles, they turned the world upside down, man. Because what? They were preaching this word from city to city. The same thing that's happening now, man. Verse 6, therefore have we commanded that all they that are signified in writing unto you by Amen, who is ordered who is ordained over the affairs and is next unto us shall all with their wives and children be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies without all mercy and pity the 14th day of the 12th month a dar of this present year so what he ordered that all of uh, all of us be killed man put to death and once again Amos a descendant of uh, Esau Edom of the tribe of Amalek man so he will be considered a so-called Jew today all right one of them fake Khazars over in our land today and they're the ones that are controlling everything. They're the ones that have control over the media, all right, over the music industry, man. All right, they're going to be the ones that are putting out the hits on us uh, to be destroyed, man. So this is their mindset. This is how they feel about us. This is what we're preparing for, man. This is what the Lord prepared us for, all right, through the Holy Scriptures, warning us of these things to come. But reading back in that Matthew 24 chapter, it says, He that endure all those things that the Lord had uh, warned us of, being persecuted, being sent up uh, uh, to the counselors, to these judges, man. It said that he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. So this is what we have to endure, man. Acts 14 and 22. It says, it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. All right, so for us to get into the kingdom, where dwelleth all good things, as it tells you in 2nd Essence, the 7th chapter, man, we got to go through the straight. We have to go through the persecution. We have to be despised in the eyes of all this world, man. But what? We're uh, held in high esteem in the eyes of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shad, man, by walking in the fear of him and denying this world. So that was it on that and that uh, Esther. But uh, I'm going to jump back to this article. So in the second paragraph, it says, in the summer of 64, Rome suffered a terrible fire that burned for six days and seven nights, consuming almost three quarters of the city. The people accused the Emperor Nero for the devastation, claiming he set the fire for his own amusement. In order to deflect these accusations and placate the people, Nero laid blame for the fire on the Christians. Now, who are the Christians, man? To be a Christian, you have to be an Israelite, man. So let's go ahead and grab that. Go to Acts. Is that 14? It's Acts 11 and 26. It says, when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Right, the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Now, you have to keep in mind that you have followers of Serapis Christus at this time period, you know, and then what? You had the followers of Yahweh Shai who were being called the Mashiachim, all right, the anointed, you know? So sometimes you got to decipher it when you're reading about Christians in history. But nevertheless, it still all applies to our people, man. You had our people that were following Serapis Christus, and you had people that were our people that were following uh, Yahweh Shad, man. You know. But at the end of the day, what these are Israelites, man. So what he placed blame on the Israelites. So jumping back, because when you read the article, when you started off by reading it, it says that the Christians uh, at the top, it says a generation after the death of Mashiach. Christianity had reached Rome in the form of an obscure offshoot of Judaism. So basically, they letting you know that it, it, it's a form of uh, 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 of Jews. You know, 
they say Judaism, but no, nah, it basically is it, it's a form, it's it's an offshoot of a uh, 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 the old the old covenant, you know, roughly paraphrasing, which let you know that it's Israelites, you know. It says, uh, in order to deflect these accusations and placate the people, Nero lay blame for the fire on the Christians, and that's what you see happening now. Because what Esau does false flags all the time, and what he always now to the point where everybody is is clear that he's the one that's doing it. So people are placing blame on the government. All right, you have these whistleblowers. They're all pointing the finger at Esau Edom now. And what happens whenever Esau is under pressure, what does he do, man? He tries to deflect it onto uh, other people, man. Because what, he can't take the pressure. He can't uh, 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 take the fact that everybody's calling him out for being the devil, man. So what, he's trying to accuse everybody else and their wickedness, man. We're in, this, when we're in the time where his wickedness is being revealed and he has to pay for his crimes, man, for his iniquities, all right? So it says the emperor ordered the arrest of a few of a few members of the sect who under torture accused others until the entire Christian populace was implicated and became fair game for retribution. So what? That's what Yahweh warned us about in that Matthew 24 chapter. It said that what some of you should be afflicted. All right. Sent to the counselors, to the judges, man. Let me go back to that. Reading that point one more time. So what? Yahweh Shai warned us of it, and now we're seeing it manifest, man, in history. So just like now, the Lord is warning us of these things again, and we're going to be in these predicaments, man. It says, Matthew chapter 24 and verse uh, 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And what they do, man? They delivered up men, all right, uh, men of the Lord, to be afflicted. It says, And shall kill you, and ye shall be hated, for, hated of all nations for my name's sake. All right? And that's what, hey, that's what happens, man. Even in Revelation, the uh, the second chapter, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, fear none of those things. And this is uh, Yahweh Shai speaking to us, man. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So don't fear, all right, what Esau, Edom has prepared, you know, his weapons, man. Nah, we, we're focused on the deliverance. We're focused on uh, uh, the uh, the strength of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai to be our strength, man. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil, being the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and that will give thee a crown of life. So this is going to happen again, man. And that can be any uh, amount of days, man. But what? We have to be faithful unto death. So that what? We can get that crown of life. So that's it, man. He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. So let's go back. It says, as many of the religious sect that could be found were rounded up and put to death in the most horrific manner for the amusement of the citizens of Rome. The ghastly way in which the victims were put to death aroused sympathy among many Romans, although most felt their execution justified. So that's right. That was the point. He wanted their he wanted our execution to be justified. So what? He uh, he demonized us for uh, bringing all this ill throughout the cities, man. OK, and this is going to happen again, man. Let me grab it. Then quoting it. Revelation chapter 12, and verse 12. It says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. All right. So this devil seeing the chariots in the skies, seeing the men of the Lord standing upon their feet, man. These are signs unto Esau, Edom, that his kingdom is up. All right. Just like going back into when Herod, when Herod uh, got a warning of the sign of the Messiah being born, Yahweh Shah being born, fear came upon him, man. Because what he knew that that was a sign of his downfall, man, a sign of the fall of, uh, uh, of their rulership, man. So what did he do? He sought to kill all the children that were under two years old, hoping to kill Yahweh Shah, man. So what? He's in fear of his uh, uh, society crumbling, man. It says, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when you grab the last uh, two verses, verse 17, it says, well, yeah, uh, verse 17, it says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Now, the dragon is speaking of the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire is re uh, reincarnated in this time today, man. But it says what? The dragon was wroth with the woman, being the Israelites. It says that... Uh, uh, um, Israel is likened unto a commonly and delicate woman, Jeremiah 6 and 2, man. It says, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. 
So meant to wait war with who? The Israelites, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And what's the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach? The spirit of prophecy. So his main target is not only the Israelites overall, but specifically those that are trying to uh, keep the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, the, the prophets. That remnant. That's it. Says the remnant of her seed. So he's he's focused on what the men that's out there sighing and crying, you know. I want for you. This is Second Timothy three and twelve. It says, "Yea, and all that will live godly in Mashiach Yahweh Shai shall suffer persecution." Man, and that's a part of counting the cost, you know, of understanding this thing of ours, man. You see, just like how in all these ancient uh, 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 kingdoms they persecuted us for uh, for doing what, for speaking righteousness, man, for following our laws. Look at what happened during the Greeks' time, man. Our women was killed, you know, our babies were hung just for what? Circumcised, man. Men were put to death, they were scalped, their tongues was cut out, man. They was maimed and they in, in their members just for not eating swine. You see? So that persecution is going to come back, man. That's why Romans 15 and 4 says the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So when these things come upon us, man, and we find ourselves in these different calamities, hey, we can have uh, 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 that faith and trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, that whether death or life, we in his hands, man. You know? This is um Psalms 57 and 1. It says, be merciful unto me, O power, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee, Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. You see, I will cry unto the uh, the power most high, unto the most high that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. And who did that, man? It, it, you, you can look at the Greek empire, you can look at the Roman empire, you can, you can look at today, man. These heathens seeking to do what? To swallow us up, to devour us. It says, Salah. The Most High shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. So that's all they do is spew madness and lies against us, man. You know, that's why all these different Christian uh, 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 Christian and, 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 and apologists, whatever you call them, man, that's why they're all coming up against us saying, what? Oh, this is the most dangerous group. Oh, they, these guys is a cult. Oh, these guys is this. These guys is that. You know? That's why they're trying to link us, what, with terrorism? How, man? By saying we're a part of Islam. By saying that the language we speak is Arabic. You see? So this is all propaganda. This is all the tools of Esau and Edom that he's using to uh, persecute us, man. And that's why we read the scripture where it says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, man, because we see all these things building up. Why? Because we're warned according to the Holy Spirit, the words that we read within these pages, man. That's why it's the utmost importance a, 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 for, for, for you to um, give diligence to make that call in election sure, man, because this ain't a game. You know, Apostle Gabar did that lesson, which, a, which is very poignant, man. The big question, when all this hell uh, uh, started getting put on you, man, when your face is on the news, you know, when you're starting to get persecuted, when your family looking at you weird, you see, when they start calling you, uh, 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 start calling you terrorist, man, start saying you the most wickedest thing on this earth, man. Calling you rapists and stuff, man. Hey, man, you see? So when these things start to happen, are you still going to call upon your how about Sham Yahweh Shah? Are you still going to call yourself Israelite? Are you still going to hold fast to your heritage, man? Because our ancient forefathers sure did read uh, Hebrews the 11th chapter. Through faith, they suffered these things, man. Men were sawed in half, you know. So we got to have that same faith, man. We got to have that same integrity, you know. I want to grab this real quick. Mr. Dad, was there more on that? This is Isaiah chapter 50 because this is the kind of boldness and faith that we have to have in these times that we're coming into, man. This is Isaiah chapter 50, 50 and verse uh, 5. It says, The Lord, the Lord Yahweh power, hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters. That's right, man. The Lord opened up our minds, our ears to receive this uh, knowledge, to have faith in him, man. And what, man? What? We repent. And we continually repent, man. Continually try and do better for Yah by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. It says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. All right. So what? He stood in great boldness, man. And the faces of such as have afflicted him, man. Even amongst our nation, man, just like we're doing today. For the Lord, Yahweh power will help me. 
Therefore shall I not be confounded. So we have to understand that we have help from the heavens, man. It doesn't matter what they can do unto us, man. What the Lord allows them to do unto us, man. All right, because he's in control of everything. And we have to always keep that in mind. Just like when Yahweh Shai got delivered up to the council, he was set before Pilate. And, uh, and, and Pilate asked him, he was like, uh, don't you know I have the power to uh, put you to death, rough, roughly paraphrasing? And what our Messiah replied back into him, man. He said that you have no power uh, uh, but what's been given unto you from heaven. So you can't do anything unto me unless the Lord allows you to do it, man. So we have to have that faith and confidence in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, knowing that what whatever we're going through, he's in control of it the whole way, man. And if it's our lot to be martyrs, then we're going to be martyrs, man. Whatever he wants to take us through to try us, then, hey, we have to know that if it's been placed in front of us, we can endure it, man. The scripture says that the Lord would not give us more than we can bear. So the affliction that we're going into, man, we can bear it. We can endure it. John saw, man, he saw the victory, man. He saw the men looking down at the sea of glass, man, the elect being in the chariots, looking at Babylon burnt down, man, looking at those that had got uh, the victory over the beast in his image, man. You know, this whole system, this way of life, man, and, and, and forsook it. So when Yahweh Shai, he saw it. So we have help from Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai. It says, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. That's right, man. Because the scripture says that hope maketh not a shame. What we hope in and these prophecies coming to pass, our salvation, man, we're going to get that, man, if we endure to the end. It says, he is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord Yahweh power will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. So that's right, man. So the Lord is going to back us in all these things, man. As long as we maintain our faith in Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, and continue, continue to serve him through all this hell that we got to go through, man. Yeah, just like the three holy children. That's it. Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael, you might know them as what? They Babylonian name. Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. They say, what, man? Hey, look, hey, 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 we ain't going to be careful to answer you in this matter, man. Meaning what? Look, we going to tell your ass, hell no, this is what's happening. You see? Hey, because our power is able to save us out of this fiery furnace. And if not, then we deserve to be thrown in it. That's right. So it is what it is, man. It's the Psalms 57 and 5. It says, yeah, I'm going to go back to it. It was more in it. Mm -hmm. It says, be thou exalted, O power above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Verse 6, they have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is by down. And that's what they're doing, man. When you see them, uh, uh, them trying to elude us, the terrorists, trying to link us with Islam. You see, that's them preparing. That's them putting a net together, man. It says, yeah, trying to provoke us at camps, man. There's going to be more of that, man. Men coming up to camps, agents trying to get us to fight, to try and make us look wild and crazy, man. Those are the things that they're going to uh, continue to try and do, man. It says, they have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Salah, man. So all these things that Esau is doing is ultimately going to backfall upon him. This is verse seven. It says, my heart is fixed. Oh, power, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. And when you go into that word fixed, it actually means established, man. You know, so it says my heart is established, man, meaning my heart is firm. That's it. You see, meaning what, man? I believe in this word, man. You see, you got full uh, uh, confidence that, that the Lord is going to help us, man. Just like Judas said, it says he had ever sure confidence that uh, uh, the help would come from heaven, man, that the Lord would come help them in their, in, in their battles. It's the same thing we have. This is, um, the book of Psalms 56 and verse 11, it says, I started 10, I started nine. It says, when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back from, uh, turn back. This I know for the most high is for me. So we must have that faith, man, that when we cry out to the Lord, that hey, 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 he, hey, our, our help ride up upon the heavens, man, as it is written. It says, in the most high will I praise his word, in the Lord will I praise his word. In the most high have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me, man. And that's a statement. You see? That's why Romans, the eighth chapter says, if, if the most high be for us, who can be against us, man? You see? This is um Psalms, um, Psalms 118 and 6. I started... Four. It says, let let them 
Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon you, how about Sham in distress? And the Lord answered me and set me in a large place, man. Meaning what? He delivered him, man. Verse six, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? And that's a question mark, man. Once again, if the Lord be for us, who could be against us, man? See, when Nero started the persecution, when he blamed us uh, for burning down Rome and he started that persecution, man, guess what he was doing, man? He was throwing us into the Colosseum. He was feeding us into lions. He used us uh, 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 as lamp poles to light the streets, man. You see, he set us on fire, man, and used us to light his streets, man. But when you read Hebrews 11 chapter, it explains it and lets you know that all these died in faith, man. Because they've seen the promises of far off. So we got to have that same mentality. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, man, it says, through the joy that was set before Yahweh Shai, he endured the cross, meaning he went through that affliction, man. Despising the shame. The word despising in the Greek means to think little or nothing of it, man. That's why Romans 8 and uh, I believe it's 18 says that the suffering this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. You see? When the seven sons was going through their deal in Second Maccabees, the seventh chapter, man, it says that they suffering a, 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 a short pain, roughly paraphrasing, man. So the things that they went through, man, was, was, was short. And then when you read about how they got tortured, scalped, they tongue cut off, man, they was, uh, 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 they members got cut off, man, they was boiled. You see what I'm saying? That was a short pain, man. This is First Peter 3 and 10. It says, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile, meaning what, man? Uh, having your mind wholesome and speaking this word, you see? And not only speaking it, but living it as well, man. Walking it how you talk it. It's verse 11. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it, meaning what? Follow after uh, Yahweh Shah's steps, man. You know, having the mindset of Yahweh Shah, man, living accordingly as you're supposed to. It's verse 12. 12 and 13 is the point. It says, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. Didn't King David say, when I cried out, man, the Lord was there for us, man? Are we hoping to receive the mercies of King David? Are we hoping to be the tabernacle of King David? So we got that same confidence and that same hope within Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. It says, but the face, it says, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good, you see, and wisdom of Solomon in the third chapter even says, man, in the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, man. So even if we have to be martyrs in this thing, man, hey, we we still have eternal life, man, prepared for us in the heavens, man. First, uh, first Thessalonians the fourth chapter lets us know that hey, hey we're going to be the first ones in those chariots coming back with Yahweh Shai. You see, when Yahweh Shai gave up the spirit, man, it said many saints raised up out of their graves. So how do you know that the Lord won't raise you up before he even come? We don't know, man. We got to keep our integrity and our faith and endure until the end. May Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai keep that spirit upon us, man. May he keep that courageous, that confident spirit upon us like Judas, like King David, so forth and so on. It says, verse 14, but and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror neither be troubled man so keep that faith and confidence in your how about sham yahweh shai you know you might be led to the guillotine man hey, 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 and it get ready to drop on your head and that motherfucker shatter you see you break out of that guillotine with spiritual power man we don't know you might be led to the to, uh, to go get tortured man and the lord can numb your body you see in 2 Maccabees, the seventh chapter, it says that one of those sons didn't regard the pain when he was getting cut open, man. Meaning what, man? Hey, 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 the Lord could have could have numbed his body, man. Made him numb to the pain. When Stephen was getting stoned, the Lord comforted him, man. When he was getting stoned, he looked into heavens and seen Yahweh Shah sitting at the right hand. That was a comfort. You see? So, 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 so you don't half-ass the Lord, man. That's why the Lord said, is my arm too short to save? Hey, the Lord can do what he wants, man. He can deliver us in miraculous ways. I got a precept. This is uh, the book of Luke, uh, chapter 12 and verse uh, 4. It says, I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. 
but I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. That's right, man. So what, man? We, we don't have to fear these devils and what they're coming down with, man. Nah. We're to fear fear Yahweh by some Yahweh side, man. All right, this devil, what? He can take you off the planet Earth and the scriptures. And we have the understanding of death, man. That what? When you die, your spirit goes back into uh, the one who gave it, the Heavenly Father, and you're in peace. As it says in the book of Job, man. Whether they've done wickedly or righteously, uh, they're going to be in the spiritual realm in peace. But what? The Lord can send your, uh, your spirit back into one of these infants to get slaughtered by one of these animals, man. Send the spirit back to, uh, to, to take a nuclear missile, man. You know, this devil doesn't have that power. But what the Lord does, Yahweh Shem was shot, so he's the one to be feared, not his devil. This is uh he's using this devil on the left hand side, man. So we fear Yahweh Shem was shot. All right, it says, uh, and are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before the most high, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. So that's right, man. So the Lord's like, look, I know the hair is on your head. I know what you're going through. I know the predicaments that you're in, man. It's not that I don't see it. All right. The Lord is seeing if we're going to have faith, if we're going to truly uh, uh, follow him with us or wherever he goes, man. This is, uh, I'm going to finish on this Isaiah, jump to wisdom of Solomon and jump back. You know, Lord's will, Isaiah chapter 15, verse uh, nine, it says, behold, the Lord, Yahweh power will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord Yahweh, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord Yahweh and stay upon his power. And when you look up that word stay, it means to rely upon, to trust in, man. So what we have to trust in the name of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, knowing that his power in those true names that the Lord so mercifully gave us in these time periods that we may call upon it for salvation, man. That's what he gave us the name for, man. When you read in Zephaniah, the third chapter, it said that the Lord will return unto us a pure language that we may call upon his name. So if the Lord doesn't care what we call upon him, why did he return unto us the pure language to call upon it, man? Because that's the name for salvation. Acts 4 and 12. All right. It says that what, man? Well, let me grab it. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. So you can't get salvation through any other individual on the planet Earth but through Yahweh Shah. But it goes further, it says, neither is there salvation in any, in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So you can only be saved by Yahweh Shah, man, and you can only call upon him and his true name to be delivered. And these times that we're in, man, Zechariah the 13th chapter, man, it says, Zechariah chapter 13. In verse 8, it says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Yahweh, two parts there, therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So over here in the land of America, two-thirds of the Israelites are going to be cut off and die. All right? It says, And I will bring the third part, being the one-third, the rest of the elect, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. So what? The Lord is going to take us through things to try us, to refine us, man. Sirach, the second chapter, says uh, uh, acceptable men are tried in the furnace of adversity, meaning the affliction. So when we're delivered up into the uh, the counselors, when we're delivered up into these prisons, these FEMA camps or whatever the case may be, if the Lord has it to be so, it's that what? We may be tried to see our faith if we really believe, man. It says, uh, and we'll try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. So what? The elect is going to have the name. The remnant is going to have the name and call upon it wherever they're scattered at, man. It says, I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai is my, is my power. And we're hoping to be a part of that remnant that's delivered, man. But what? We're going to have that name and call upon it. This is the book of wisdom of Solomon in the third chapter in verse uh, one. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the most high and there shall no torment touch them. And the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. So, yes, yeah, some of us may be, uh, may be martyrs, as the scripture tells us already. You know, and the sight of the unwise, what? It just looks like that that we're just being put to death, man. But it says what? And their departure is taken for misery, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace, just like with the Maccabees brothers, man. And the sight of the unwise, what? It seems that they're uh, that they uh, die there in misery and everything like that. But as it's going to go into, I'll read it. It says, verse four, 
But though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality, because that's what we have to hope in, man. If we die for Yah, Bashem, Yah, Shah, we endure it to the end, man. It says, and having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded, for the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. So we have to go through this proving process, man. We got to go through this hell so that we be worthy, man, to receive the crowns, man. The Lord ain't just passing out crowns just to niggas or anybody, man. Nah, those men that receive crowns that second Ezra saw, all right? Those men crown, what? They went through a lot of tribulation. They went through the hell to maintain their integrity, man. They were made purified. Hey, because it said in second Ezra, these are they that put on, uh, uh, that put off the uh, mortal and put on the immortal. It says, and therefore they are clothed in white, roughly paraphrasing, or I might be mixing revelation up with it. But the point is that they were the uh, they were made pure, man. And how are you made pure? Hebrews 2 and 10. Matter of fact, I'll just grab that real fast. This is uh the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, and verse 10, and it reads, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So Yahweh Shah was perfected through what? The sufferings that he went through, man. He was put through that fire and he was in any what? He was purified, just like the gold, the silver, or precious stones. Well, he said, the servant is not greater than his master. So if Yahweh Shah was purified through the sufferings he went through, how much more are we? You see? So we got to go through that fire, man. Second answer to the seventh chapter. It says, if he passed not the dangers that set before him, how can he receive this inheritance, man? So Yahweh Shah passed through his dangers, man, and he and he made it through fine colors. So through him, we get the victory. You see, the book of First John says what, man? We over, we already overcame through through Yahweh Shah. It says, "Blessed be Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah that giveth us up the victory through Yahweh Shah, man." So we already won, but we gotta have faith and patience in that, man. We gotta trust in that, you know. Jumping back to uh, wisdom of Solomon. <clears throat> It says, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 4, For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded, for the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering, man. So what, man? We're truly, hey, we're uh, uh, presenting our body a li living sacrifice, man. So this is a part of it, man. Whatever hill that we have to go through, man, just know that what? The Lord is uh, controlling everything, man, and that we're in his hands, man. And he won't put upon us more than we can bear. So what if we got to go through these particular things, man? He's going to give us the strength to endure it. Verse 7, it says, And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. So this is a part of the reward, man. It says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. So it's all about the elect, man. All right? That's who the Lord is going to uh, be uh, protecting, watching over in these time periods, man. And that's what we're hoping to be. So going back into this article, it says, uh, <clears throat> it says, The emperor ordered the arrest of few members of the sect who, under torture, accused others until the entire Christian populace was implicated and became fair game for retribution. And as it says in Second Ezra, the, uh, the 16th chapter, all right, I'll just go ahead and pull it up real quick. There's going to be a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, man. Let me grab that. Second Ezra, chapter 16. This is Second Ezra 16 and verse... Second Ezra 16 and 72, 71, it says, they shall be like madmen, sparing none. Oh, Salakia. Second Ezra uh, 16 and verse 70, it says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So we're going to be targeted, man. Not only us, but the rest of you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. All right? You might not, you might not uh, agree <laughs> Uh, with what we're saying and everything like that. But hey, prophecy is prophecy, man. This great insurrection is coming. Doesn't matter if you're a Christian, if you're an Israelite and you proclaim to be in these Christian churches, if you're an Israelite and you in Jehovah's wickedness, man, if you're an Israelite and you're uh, a Muslim, you know, uh, reading the Quran, hey, this insurrection is coming. 
against all of you, man. But there's only a uh, uh, protection for those that believe in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, as the scripture has said, man, the elect. So those other doctrines are going to save you, man. It says, they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still for spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold and the fire. So that's right. When all these things happen, and you see these men being protected through the spirit and power, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, through the angels, through the chariots, through the spiritual power, all right, through the Lord having all these things work out for these men greater good, you're going to see clearly who the Lord's been dealing with, man. But this is going to happen, and we're coming very close to it, man. This devil is, is mad as hell. He's pissed the hell off, man. And now he's about to express it. All right, this is a... Uh, it says here, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your God. So the Lord is going to protect us. He's going to guide us through all this tribulation that we have to endure, man. Jumping back, it says, uh, as many of the religious sect that could be found were rounded up and put to death in the most horrific manner for the amusement of the citizens of Rome. The ghastly way in which the victims were put to death aroused sympathy among many Romans, although most felt their execution justified. It says, uh, beginning so for you real fast. Con, con. because uh, Ecclesiastes says, uh, was uh, uh, what have been done is what shall be done again, man. So, you know, great persecution was done unto the Israelites during that time, and it's gonna happen again. It's the second interest, the 16th chapter, and the 68th verse. It says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols, man. So, what's gonna take place, man? You know, they're going to round up a lot of people. They're going to take them to concentration camps. And guess what? They call them re-education camps as well. And they're going to tell you to do what, man? They're going to tell you to renounce what you believe in. They're going to tell you to take the RFID chip. You yeah. see? This is all the things that Esau Edom has set up and planned. It says, verse 69, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision. So if you consent to them, man, you're going to be destroyed. It says, in and reproach and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place... And in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, man. See, so the Bible have warned us, man. The Holy Spirit is warning us and telling us to prepare for these things to come. That's why it says in Isaiah, the 60, uh, what's that? The 33rd chapter in the sixth verse, it says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure, man. You see? And when you go into that word stability, it's the Hebrew word amawan, which means faith. So this wisdom and knowledge is what's going to keep us stable. That Our faith is what's going to keep us firm because we know that these things must need happen, man. Just like how Yahweh Shai, he prayed and said, hey, can this cup come away from me? The Lord didn't answer him. So he knew he had to go through with it, man. But guess what? It says the angels came and ministered unto him, meaning what? They came and comforted him. They came and gave him the different scriptures, which lets us know that we're going to be comforted in the end. The same scriptures that was brought that the Holy Spirit had us bring out, man. What can man do unto us? Fear not him that can destroy the body. Who can harm you if you be uh, 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 if you be followers of that which is good? You see all these precepts, man. So if we find ourselves in a situation, hey, 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 we know, man. Revelation two and ten. You know, it says you're gonna be tried, man. So the Lord is trying your spirit to see if you're worthy of Him, man. And I hope and pray He give us the strength to endure whatsoever uh, uh, is put in front of us. It says, um, verse seventy. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste, and, and it's talking about you Israelites, man. It's talking about you Israelites. You see? Whether you call yourself black consciousness, you call yourself a Moor, you call yourself a Muslim, it don't matter, man. Esau Edom is coming down with that, with what? That perpetual hatred. You see, because even though you call yourself a Muslim, it's still a possibility that you could wake up to know that you are Israelite. So he going to whack your ass, too, man. It says, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in the fire, man. So the elect is going to be tried as well, as it is written in, in, in Zechariah, the 13th chapter, the nine verse, man. It said what, man? Hey, hey, that that third shall be brought through the fire. You see? So we got to go through that, that affliction as well. Second Ezra, the seventh chapter says what? That the righteous shall go through the straight and hope for the wide, man. Yet we have that hope. That's what we have. 
It says, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and they still going to go through the straits and yet not see the wide. Meaning what? They're going to have to die here in America, man. You don't want to take part in that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, this is back in the article. It says, the beginnings of Christian martyrdom. The following account was written by the Roman historian Tacitus in his book, Anos, published for you a few years after the event. Tacitus was a young boy living in Rome during the time of the persecutions. It says, therefore, to stop the rumor that he has set Rome on fire, he, Emperor Nero, falsely charged with guilt and punished with the most hateful, the most fearful tortures. The persons commonly called Christians who were generally hated for their enormities. Christus, the founder of that name, was put to death as a criminal by Pontius Pilate, procreator of Judea and the reign of Tiberius, but the pernicious superstition repressed for a time broke out yet again, not only through Judea, where the mischief originated, but through the city of Rome also. So pretty much they were trying to hinder the truth and the truth only kept uh, exploding, man, all right? The more they tried to suppress the knowledge of the Israelites uh, uh, proclaiming the, uh, the coming of our Lord and Savior, man, the more that it broke out, man. It says, uh, reading this part again, it says, repressed for a time broke out yet again, not only through Judea, where the mischief originated, but through the city of Rome also, where there are all things horrible and disgraceful from all quarters as, as to a common receptacle and where they are encouraged. So pretty much saying that Rome was a hub for a lot of wickedness, man. It says, accordingly, first those who were arrested, who confessed they were Christians, next on their information, a vast multitude were convicted not so much on the charge of burning the city as of hating the human race. So what they were saying that the Israelites hate the human race, and that's the same narrative that they put upon us, man. Because what? The Bible declares what? That the Lord is for the Israelites, man. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says that the Lord made us above all nations upon the planet Earth. That what? We're superior. Even in our captivity, we're superior than the rest of these nations, according to the Bible, according to what the Lord ordained, according to what he uh, 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 spoke, man. So what? They look at that as being what? We hate all these other nations, which is true, man. These other nations have to pay for what we've done, uh, for what they've done unto us, man. So even though they created this false flag, they weren't getting charged for the false flag. They were being charged for the doctrine. And a part of that doctrine is what? Them perceiving that we hate everybody. And that's what, what? They try to put that label on us as being a hate group. When the Bible says hate the evil and love the good. All right. It says, ye that love the Lord, hate evil. All right. So what there, the, 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 the issue is what the doctrine and what we're teaching, man. It says in their very deaths, they were made the subjects of sport for they were. And that's where you get your circuses, man. All right. And when they were persecuting Israelites in various manners for their pleasurement, man, for their pleasures, it says for they were convert for they were covered with the hides of wild beasts and worried to death by dogs or nailed to crosses or set fire to. And when the day waned, burned to serve for the evening lights, just like the brother explained, street lamps, man. That's where you get street lamps from, where they were lighting us on fire in the middle of the night, man. It says, Nero offered his own garden players for the spectacle and exhibited a, a circun, 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 circun game which is just circus games and discriminately mingling with the common people in the, in the dress of a charioteer or else standing in his chariot. For this cause, a feeling of compassion arose toward the sufferers, though guilty and deserving of exemplary capital punishment because they seem not to be cut out, cut off for the public good, but were victims of, of the ferocity of one man. So that was all just to show that what, man? That this devil is going to blame us for a lot of things, man. But what is the true issue is what we're teaching is this doctrine, man. Us standing up upon our feet, man. So I'll go ahead and grab this in the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. And if you got anything else, let me know. I can bring it out. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter five and verse one. It says, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the faces of such as have afflicted him. And we have to maintain this boldness in Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shad, man. Right now, we can go out on the highways and byways and the affliction hasn't increased. 
but it's going to be a time, man, where they're going to uh, uh, try and make us denounce our Lord, man. All right. They're going to try and make us consent unto their ways, man. It says, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the faces of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. So them seeing us standing up in great boldness has them in terrible fear, as it says in Revelation, the 11th chapter. Great fear fell upon them when they saw them rise upon their feet, man. It says, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. All right, because what? The Lord is going to deliver us, man. It says, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools account of his life madness and this end to be without honor. And that's right. They think that we're wasting our time being out on the street corners, man. Not realizing that what the work that we're doing is going to uh, 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 aid us in being delivered from these coming calamities, man. The Lord is looking upon us and having comfort in uh, uh, comfort in us. And his thoughts towards us are of good and not of evil because of this work that we're doing, which he put it in our spirit to do. So it's all because of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, bestowing his mercy upon us to do this work, man. It says, how is he numbered among the children of the Most High and his lot among the saints? Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. And that's pretty, uh, pretty much it on that, man. Hey, but hey, the, the Lord is going to deliver us, man. So the persecution is coming. We're going to be uh, uh, put out on the news, man. Mainstream news, de demonized, man. But what? Hey, we got to endure all those things, man. You had anything else, Sock? Yes, sir, bro. Khan, hey, with that being said, we're going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash. Never honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. The Lord willing, that was edifying. And with that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom.